Hey, and welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be going over the new update to Autogen. We're going to be covering a few things today, but two that I find really interesting are Autogen Studio Update and something called Autogen Benchmark. Well, let's get started. All right, now we're going to talk about the update to Autogen Studio. The first thing that we need to do, well, there's two things we need to do. First is install the upgrade. So if you don't have it at all, you'll just say pip install Autogen Studio and then install it. Or if you already have it, but you just need to upgrade, you'll say pip install dash dash upgrade and then Autogen Studio. Once you have that done, the next thing is you still need to export your open API AI key. I tried to just port the API key inside of the agents. That still didn't work. So you have to say export open AI API underscore key. I think I said it backward the first time, but it's open AI API key. So you set this equals and then whatever your API key is, go ahead and put that here. Whenever you're done with that, then we can run it and I'll show you the update. So you, all you have to do is say autogen studio UI dash dash port 8081 or whatever port you want. Whenever you click enter, then it'll bring up a URL for you. And then we can go ahead and uh, click it and go there. So let's go ahead and do that now. And here we are. The first thing is, let's make sure we have the agents. So if you go over to the build section and then agents, uh, I did create another just, it's basically a copy of the primary assistant. I just named it something else. So we have a user proxy, a primary assistant and a test assistant. So two assistant agents and a user agent. And you can just do that by over here clicking the new agent button. So if you click that, then you can start it. But we're here for the group chat. So now if you go down to workflows, let's create a workflow what you'll see the difference is when you, whenever you choose it, now there's two options, two agents and group chat. So either the default that we were using is just between two agents, or you can now do group chat. Now with group chat, let's, uh, let's name this like Python workflow. And then, uh, let's keep the summary method to last, take the last message. And then the sender is going to be me, the user proxy, and then the receiver, let's take this and we need to modify this. So the first thing is you can see up here has a little area for the group chat agents. So we have a primary assistant, and then let's also add the test assistant. The speaker selection, you know, you now choose round robin or random, but let's just keep it auto. So let, let it decide. And then the agent name, we'll just keep it group chat assistant, that's fine. And then the human input mode is just never, I mean, it's just gonna be like that anyways, for the group chat. Um, and then we're just gonna click, click okay. And we're done. So did click okay again, and we created our workflow here. So basically now workflow is a group chat with a user and two assistant agents. If you go back to playground, it uh, looks like you still in the drop down. You still have to drop down and then select Python workflow, even though it was there and then click create. And now we're ready. So let's just create, let's have it create something for us. So write for me a Python function that takes in a string and then outputs the number of characters in that string. And I know this is very simple, but it's just to show you how group chat works. So well, let's come back whenever this is done. Okay, and we're done. And now we see that group chat works. So if we click this drop down, what you can see here is user proxy to the primary assistant. The primary assistant made the uh, made the Python code, and then it was going to say something to the test assistant. Well, the test assistant tested it and it returned the correct number of characters. All right, cool. And also now, um, I don't think, I don't know if it was there before, but if you see code, you can now just click this clipboard to copy it. Sweet. And that's a quick update to Autogen Studio. Now that we can do group chat in the UI, which is really nice. And also if you didn't know, they have a gallery section. So I'm going to paste this link in the description. And what this is, is just uh, various uh, uh, demos or applications from the community. And they've had to create a, or submit a PR to make it here, which means that it was looked at before it was here. So it's not just like, anything. Um, so the team uh, that's like maintaining GitHub looked at these and accepted their request to have this here. So you can come through here and look at these and, you know, download them. And uh, this will also help you look at what other people are doing and give you ideas of what you may want to do. They just added more here with the update. Okay. So here is Autogen Bench. Basically, this is a tool for evaluating Autogen agents and workflows on established LLMs and agent benchmarks. And something also to look at is, you know, it says it handles downloading, configuring, running, and reporting supported benchmarks. Also, you'll need Docker to make this run. So what I did here is I just created a new project. Okay, don't worry about this human email. I'll get to that to us in a second. Um, but when you create the new project, 
the first thing you need to do is create an OAI config list. And whenever you open it up, you know, we'll just have the model and your API key here. So just make sure you have your API key here. And then in your terminal, the next thing you do is write this command. You want to export that config list that you just created. And the next thing is just install autogen bench. So just pip install autogen bench. And then you just need to clone human eval, which is an example that they already have for autogen bench. And then once you've done that, then you just need to change your directory into it. So just CD human eval. Okay. Now they turn the directory. The next thing is to actually run it. So you're going to copy this here and you're going to say auto bench run subsample 0.1. Okay. And I'm going to ex explain what this means, but this means uh, we're going to take 10% of the samples from this human eval example. Okay. We're going to run each one three times and we're going to run it from this JSON file. So this JSON L file. Okay. And I'll, I'm going to go and run this and then I'll explain what this means. So it makes a little bit more sense. We'll go into the files and see what it says. So once you run this, now this could take a while because as it was doing it, I had to install more dependencies. So it took me a good like five or so minutes to run this, but go ahead and run this and we'll be back. Okay. So once you run that, your human eval is going to open up and it's going to have a lot more things here, right? But the main thing is if you open up the results, it's going to have about 16 different results, right? And why is there 16? Well, remember when we sampled 0.1 or 10%, what we did was if you go to, we went to this task here and we ran this JSON file, everything was based off this JSON file. So if we open this up, you can see that there are, see, it starts out at human eval zero all the way to 163, which means there's 164. So it took 10% of these, randomly took 10% of these, it just rounds down to 16. So it took 16 of those and ran whatever it said here. So let's take human eval 13. So human eval 13 is right here, right? So it got the templates uh, from two agents here. Okay, so it means it, it took the scenario and the prompt text. Um, it has, we need to take in a scenario, the entry point, this is something called greatest common divisor, which is like a function. And what happens is we have a prompt for it. So it's basically, we say, create this, uh, create this method. Here's a greatest common divisor it takes in two integers and it's going to return an int and it kind of just describes what it is, right? Okay. And then it kind of runs some tests along these and it's going to run a bunch of tests for this human eval. And then for each of these other ones. So now what we can do is we need to, what they're saying is we need to tabulate or basically just see what the results are from running these tests. So if you open back up your terminal and you just want to type in auto bench tabulate, and then we want to take from the results folder, the, uh, this human eval two agents, uh, test directory. So when we run this, it's going to give us uh, in a nice way, all the results and successes and failures. Okay. So let's look at this. So it looks like here, it's just missing. Um, trial zero and one from human eval 107 um, and then trial two was a success so when we said repeat three times this is what we, well, this is what we meant so for each uh, human evaluation it ran three times but it looks like pretty much everything was successful uh so for human eval 13 right here right all three trials were successful now let's go into here so what we can do is then each one as you can see if you go into each trial zero one and two uh you can actually see the I guess the greatest common divisor, yeah, it actually creates the code for you. And because this was a success, you know, it's, which means that it also tested it and it gave, uh, it gave a proper return value from this. So it works, you know, you could just, you could copy this code now and you could run it. All right. And that's Autogen Bench. So I think what's nice about this and what I, what I'm thinking in the future is let's say you have agents that you want them to perform a certain task. Well, what if you can run them? uh, in this bench. So you could, you have the task that you want to run. Maybe, maybe instead of having, you know, all these functions, you only have a few functions, but you want to tr test all of them out, but you maybe want to try them like 10, 20, 50 times and see how many were successful. And then you could choose the generated Python code that it deemed successful based on running the tests from that code. I can see applications for this, um, in the future, whenever this, this, uh, matures more. Okay. So two more things now, just quickly, two more things. They added a SQL agent, or there's an example of a SQL agent for spider text to SQL benchmark. What does that mean? Well, basically we want to, they want to demonstrate natural language questions being turned into SQL queries. So if I say, give me the last month of stock data from this database, well, what's going to do is then it'll create a, like a select query for the date range of the last month and then return that to you. So you can ask it a natural language question, like how we would talk to each other and turn it into a query. And I think this just probably deserves its own 
probably deserves its own video. Um, they use SQLite database. And basically, if you come down here, here's one. So it's saying generate a SQL query to find the famous titles of artists that do not have any volume. Uh, and then it, so, so then it writes a query. It says, here's a select statement, um, from the artist, from the artist table where it doesn't exist, where the volume doesn't exist, where the ID, uh, from the ID from the artist table, um, equals the artist ID from the volume table. I think that's all it's saying. Um, and then it, you know, gives back a result. And then the last thing for group chat, they add this thing called enable clear history, which gives you the possibility to clear history messages of agents manually by providing clear history phrase in the user prompt. Yeah, see, it's, it's still experimental. Um, but what I imagine is you can clear a certain, you can either clear a certain agent or the whole group of agents. You can just clear their history, um, which means then it would probably come up with like new response. Uh, like if you have input, right? maybe you don't like what they're saying and you could somehow clear it. Um, I don't really see many examples of this. This is something that they added. Um, let's see here, clear, clear history of messages for all agents or selected one. Like I just said, um, I figured that's what it was. Uh, once provided, when you clear history is provided, the history of messages for all agents is cleared. So I wonder if you run this once and you don't like it, you're like, I want to run this again, then you can have it clear the previous history. Like maybe you want to just keep getting different responses with um, the same cache. I'm not sure, but this is this is something new. We'll look into this more as it progresses. All right, thanks for sticking to the end to see all these updates for Autogen. I think the big one that generally people are going to like is the more Autogen Studio UI becomes a thing, you know, with the group chat, which a lot, I think some a lot of people use and that you will use in the future is that's a nice update. Now we can actually have a full group of agents talking to each other. I also think that the benchmark has the potential to be wonderful. I really do. Because then you can look at, it can tell you which agents gave uh, gave correct code output and which didn't. So then you can maybe choose which ones you like, you know, and then it gives you is the prompting, right? If you have so many failures, maybe the prompting that you gave for that agent wasn't good, right? And that maybe that's like, okay, what can I do better to prompt what I want from this agent? Either way, I think there were a couple of nice updates here. I hope you enjoyed watching and I will see you next video. And in the meantime, watch these videos.